everything that you're going to see in here, somebody has asked for. I don't listen to what the sales reps tell me are hot. I wait for my customers to tell me. So if they come in the first time, it's not here. But we go ahead and order it, and then it's here usually within 48 hours or less. And from that point on, I keep it here at least two pieces on a peg until either my wholesaler doesn't carry it anymore or uh, it's discontinued. So that's why you're going to see a huge variety of tackle. I don't uh, discount it and move it simply because it's not moving, but rather it's going to have value. It's only a matter of time and things cycle. So um, I will hold on to it. And if it's discontinued, which many of these things are, I'm patient. I, this is not bread and butter for me. This is extra money, so I don't have to worry about moving things. And I just patient and wait for somebody to come along and say, oh, wow, you still have this. Yes, you better get it now because when it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass. Welcome to Retro Bassin, and welcome to a very special episode of Retro Bassin that, to be honest, I have wanted to do for almost eight months now. Toward the end of last year, I had a business trip that brought me to Nashville, Tennessee, and like I am prone to do on such trips, I typed in the word tackle shop into my Google search, and I tried to seek out any local tackle shops that were still in existence. Too often that search is fruitless and it leads you to a sports authority or a Dick's Sporting Goods. But fortunately for me, it brought me to a Clarksville, Tennessee and a little tackle shop known simply as the Tackle Box. I am standing in front of the first of four different buildings on the site of the Tackle Box and it is actually a at-home tackle shop for owner and bass fisherman, Walt Herman. So why did it take eight months for me to film this? Well, I gotta be honest with you, the last time I was here, I had about maybe one or two hours with which to try to get some content, and I just didn't feel like I could do Walt or his amazing tackle shop any justice in that amount of time. So I had to wait until the next time I got to Nashville, put a little bit more time aside on calendar, and here I am today. I'm gonna spend some time interviewing Walt, talk a little bit about the history of this place. But for me, as an old school tackle junkie, I gotta tell you, the first time I cracked open shed number one, my mind was literally blown with all of the old school gold inside. So today on this very special walkthrough episode of the show, I'm going to go shed by shed and try to show you guys what kind of old school gold is inside. If you are anywhere in the Nashville area, I gotta tell you, this place is definitely worth a detour. But fortunately, even if you're not in the Nashville area, Walt will ship. So if you see something that you like in this episode, I will drop all of Walt's content information in the video description. Definitely reach out to him, let him know Retro sent you. But in the meantime, before my time runs out, let's get on with this tackle tour. Here we are inside of shed number one at the tackle box. And according to Walt, this is the spinnerbait, jig, and Ned rig part of the tackle shop. I'm gonna do my best in this and the remaining three sheds to give you guys a walkthrough and also show you some of the old school gold that is still on the peg. However, not before 
I load up one of these baskets that Walt has in every shed because I know if I leave it now, it will probably be gone by the time I give Walt a call. I interviewed Walt about the history of this place in front of this wall because this to me is one of the coolest sections in the whole place. I'm a huge spinnerbait guy. It is one of my confidence baits even to this day. And I actually much prefer to fish a spinnerbait to a modern day version, AKA the chatterbait. So behind me are a number of Stan Sloan Zorro spinnerbaits. The company is now run by, I believe, Stan's children but Walt still has some of the old school spinner baits on the shelf. And according to Walt, the way to tell that is that the old models of the Zorro were stamped right there. This is a awesome old school thick blade. And man, look at that thing. The old Stan Sloan's Zorro, <laughs> the aggravator. Now, one of the things that Walt does is he says he does not actually discount old school products. I think a lot of times when you see a shelf of discontinued baits in a tackle shop, it is in the bargain bin. Well, I think Walt, like me, like you, sees the value in the old gold. And so he definitely does not mark down the price on those baits. That being said, this bait for $9.19 is still way better than you'll find on the eBay. I'm going to grab a few of these Stan Sloan aggravators for the new Retro Bass and Tackle Wall, and also turn the camera around to give you a first person perspective of Tackle Shed number one. All right, well, let's start off with this, the wall of aggravator spinner baits. Now, what Walt was telling me is the new ones here are not stamped on the blade. And he said the blade tends to be a little bit thinner. But here is an OG one. Yep, it says a Stan Sloan Zorro on the blade itself. <laughs> so how much are these guys? So 769, 919. 769 so it looks like the prices range but all said and done not too bad for i know you can get the new aggravators but as far as the og with the stamped blade these are just not made anymore so there's the main wall of the aggravators there's a secondary wall of the aggravators this is more let's see here yep these are all stamped 889 uh, or 869, I can't tell. Oh, I'm gonna have to grab a few of these, but not go crazy. And there's aggravators all over this place. There's more on this wall right here. Looks like some night spinner baits. Oh, look at that one. <laughs> oh man. So there's a bunch of more aggravators. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go this way around counterclockwise to try to kind of give you some order here. So here are the aggravators. Moving on, we've got a giant wall of Strike King. Looks like a mix of uh, Hack Attack and Denny Brower jigs. Moving on, we've got some jig heads here. I see some Buckeyes, some Strike Kings, some Arky jigs. Looks like some Ned Rig and tube type stuff. Yeah, a bunch of Ned Rig stuff here. Some more jigs over here. This is interesting. What is this? Uh, Jim Moynaz Rocket Jig Tournament Football Head. Ooh, that's a good looking little package, isn't it? Looks like Savage Minnesota. Huh. And that's for $239. So we've got some more spinner baits here. What is these? Uh, Stafford baits or Stanford baits? Got some Spro jigs. Ah, nice section of some Jewel jigs. Some nice football head jigs for $6.29. And then these are the ones I used to fish a pretty good bit, the old finesse jigs. I like these. And a two pack for $5.69. Moving on. Ho ho ho! <laughs> Hello there, Mr. Wedge. Look at that. 
Nice OG Stanley wedge, quarter ounce. Okay, well this is gonna be the first thing that I definitely pick up. I've been kind of trying to recreate my tackle box from 1993 and this exact spinnerbait was in it. In fact, this is that color. It was a quarter ounce double willow leaf. Man, nice uh, chartreuse and white. I caught a lot of little bass on this bait. It looks like this thing is $8.99. So I'm definitely going to pick up one or two of those guys. Put them in my bin. Now they've also got the white as well, which is pretty sweet. That's another color that I loved. Uh, I'm gonna have to think about that one. So moving on, got a bunch of jigs here. I don't know if anything is too OG except for, oh, well, here we go. <laughs> Definitely an OG section. The original Rattleback jig from Lunker Lore. Yeah, this is a pretty cool one. And what a selection. Look at all of those Rattlebacks that Walt has. Endorsed by a pro angler Randy Howell, 3 8 ounce. I always love the rattle on the rattlebacks. Nice. I know Lunker Lore still makes these, but this is a. Uh, I feel like that package, that design has not changed too, too much since I first started fishing them. Moving on, I see some more jigs here, some more War Eagles, some more new spinner baits, some Booyah, some Strike Kings. What do we have here? Some Picasso spinner baits up top. Ah, down below, look at this. Ho ho, Lunker Lore. Look at that blade. That is a really cool OG blade. I remember when they came out with this one. I've got this with the soft minnow body. I don't have that head. That's pretty cool. And 589. Yeah, I think uh, the old bass and wall is going to need one or two of those guys. I think the old bass and box might need one or two of those guys too. Here we've got some Nichols Pulsators. And I gotta tell you, 869 is actually a pretty good price for a Nichols spinnerbait these days. So we've got some Hildebrand spinnerbaits. I don't see any snag of Sally's. Moving on, more spinnerbaits. This is a pretty nice section, all Hildebrand gold blades. This is really, really nice. And are they all Hildebrands? Yeah, they are. They make some of the best blades in the market today. Look at that nice painted chartreuse blade. That actually might not be a Hildebrand, but the rest of these stamped most definitely are. Coming around some War Eagles, buzz bait section. Nothing too OG. Ah, the old Buzz King, I remember that guy. Then also up top, check this out. <laughs> the Boogerman Racket Buzz. Ooh. Can't quite see the price on this one. Uh, $7.99. It was $14. Bucks. Boogerman. Look at that. Hand tied. Uh, tour mint ready. Boogerman will get you. <laughs> I'm not too familiar with the Boogerman, but that does not look like a new buzz bait, does it? Even sounds old. And then kind of wrapping up everything. So we've got more jigs here. And, oh, look at this. <laughs> A bubble gum aggravator. That's kind of sweet, isn't it? A little 3 8 ounce. 469, that might be worth picking up. I actually used to throw a bubblegum spinnerbait every once in a while. And then what do we have here? Oh, I always love these OG cards. Stan Sloan's Head Knocker Buzz Baits. Looks like a couple little buzz baits there. A few more left. Those guys are $2.79. Awesome. Okay, so now we're back to the start and I'm gonna go low. <laughs> I think we made the first pass high. Second pass, I'm gonna hit this shelf and the floor. <sighs> like I said, there's just so much stuff here. So I see some loose lizards here. All right, so we've got some more baits here. We've got some nice head and torpedoes, $12.99 for those guys. 
Ah, the old man's loudmouth, $13.99. Ooh, is that an AC Shiner? That is an AC Shiner. List price $17.89, but looks like it's on sale for $12.52. Ooh, that's a goodie. And look, I could hang that on the peg. That one might be one to think about. Ooh, that's a good looking bait. So down here, we've got a uh, more overstock aggravators. It's nonstop, it's crazy. We've got some rapplers in some of the bins up here. So it looks like we have some sinking minnows, $5.99. Coming into some more minnows here. All right, looks like we've got a couple of rapplers here. Looks like a Ratlin Fat Wrap. Uh, it looks like a RFR5 GSD for $8.99. And then I see the smaller size the RFR4 for $5.99. Down below, either side, I see some pork. Ho, ho, ho. I do see some pork. It's a nice twin tail. Uh, $10.99 for that. These all twin tails, yep. And that's the OG Uncle Josh. You can tell by the, well, just about everything about it. And, oh man, look over here, just a ton more pork. Let's try to see what kind of sizes and styles they have. A lot of twin tails in black. Twin tails. Ah, there we go. The old jumbo pork frog. $10.99. <laughs> you wonder how many decades ago this hog died. Probably a few. And then, oh, look at this, the old glitter pork. That's a classic. And no price on that one. There's a nice glitter pork for $10.58 in the old number 11. So just a boatload of OG Uncle Josh pork. Coming back up to the top, let's buzz through here. We'll pick up our lunker lures. Looks like a bunch of loose jigs. Some new G pork. And then more old pork down here. Let's see what models they've got. So man, he's loaded up. Oh, that's a nice one. Nice red. Uh, looks like a jumbo pork frog, three baits, $10.99. Bunch of those and more twin tails. So all in all, just a ton of old school pork. It actually started 29 years ago. And what prompted it was that myself and my fellow anglers, we couldn't find what we wanted. So there's gotta be a better way. So I looked into, uh, well, let's open up my own store. And so uh, found myself a wholesaler, Pittman Creek Wholesale, James Coffey, when he started out, been with him ever since. And so we started out actually in a barber shop. The wall uh, in the barber shop was vacant and Terry Bryant was the owner at that time and he was an angler with me. We were both in the same club together and I said, we got talking about it and I said, well, Terry, you know, you got your wall space over here. And he said, yeah, why not? And he says, uh, I won't charge you anything for it because it'll bring the guys in and some of them will obviously want to get a haircut and start getting a haircut from me. And that's exactly what happened. So Terry, uh, we did that for a couple of years, and then unfortunately he got ill, and so I had to move, he had to close up. And I went out to a place called Country Road Campers and Marine, which is on the other side of the Cumberland River. Stayed there for a couple of years, and then they had to uh, do some restructuring, so I moved to another marine dealership. And unfortunately that didn't last long. <laughs> and so then I bought my own brick and mortar which was out on Route 79 towards Dover to the lakes. Stayed there for a couple of years. Unfortunately though, uh, it didn't work out. Uh, there was road construction, uh, changing in types of lures that people were using. And I sold live bait and all the live bait people literally died. Old age, they just died and quit fishing. So I had to do a restructuring bankruptcy. And so I looked into, well, what about home-based businesses? Looked favorable, went down to the city of Clarksville, told them what I wanted to do. They said, this is what you do. 
went back to the bankruptcy judge and said, this is what I want to do. And he says, great. He says, uh, I'll let you keep all your inventory, but we'll have to unfortunately uh, garnish your wages to, to pay back over five years. And I said, that's fine. I have no problem. And so after five years, it ended. And then I retired from what I was doing at the time and I had this already going. So I just moved right into it. And being here at the house, you don't have to worry about the brick and mortar type of uh, issues that always come up. My wife, Linda, was very happy because guess what? I'm home. And what better way to sell a product than lying on your couch and waiting for the customers to come to you. All right, here we are heading into shed number two. And I wanna step back and just show you for a minute just how unassuming these are. I mean, you look at that and you go, you know what, that could be a lawnmower, that could be maybe some power tools, perhaps a rod or two, but you have no idea what you're gonna see when we open this door. <laughs> Check this out, that is what is so insane about this. You saw that shed, you wouldn't think twice, and now look soft plastic heaven and even the doors of each shed are pegboarded up here we are in shed number two which to me is by far the best smelling shed of them all as you can tell i am surrounded literally floor to rafters with soft plastics there is a big variety of soft plastics in here as you can tell, we got some of the green guys on the wall, but there are definitely more than enough OG soft plastics to satisfy most bass and buds. Man, this is a pretty, pretty cool shed all said and done. I cannot wait to show you some of the stuff in here. I even think I spot some old school fish scent over there that I'm gonna have to figure out how to get to airport security. <laughs> So we'll go through shed number two as quickly as I can. Looks like some soft plastic frog baits up here. Move it over, get a nice air conditioner that helps on a day like this. Check this out, some OG Mans baits. The Dragon series from Mans, the Dragon Swimming Worm, winner of the 2003 Bassmaster Classic for 539. So there's a bunch of those dragon baits there for man's. I remember that series actually, that was a pretty cool one. I don't know exactly what the, the gimmick was on that other than it's salt injected. Moving on, we've got, let's see what the theme is here. Looks like just some general soft plastic baits from Big Bite, from Z-Man, Power Bait. Looks like some Senkos here and then a mega wall of Zoom. I am not a Zoom aficionado, so I don't know what of this is new or discontinued, but there is some pretty wild stuff here. Look at that color. Huh, that's an interesting color of the Speed Crawl Ultra Vibe Rocky Top. Is Rocky Top the name of the color? <laughs> that's pretty glorious, that just, uh, that caught my eye. That's interesting. But yeah, there's just a ton of stuff. Zoom speed crawls. We got some chunks. That's an interesting color. Powder blue. That's a very OG worm color there. You don't see that too often. I like that a lot. And how much are those guys? $2.99. So pretty uh, standard good zoom pricing. So we got some more chunks over here. That looks like an older one or at least a faded one. So pretty good collection of Zoom chunks. We got some Yum split tails. We got a bunch of V&M baits here. Some more Zoom french fries or centipedes. Got some Jean LaRue baits. I see some cream scoundrels. Ah, some nice old uh, jig and spinnerbait trailers from Rick Clun. I think these are Lucky Strike if I recall. Or Worm King, rather. Yep, Worm King. Yep. That's pretty cool for $3.25. Trying to one-hand this, sorry. Got some more Dragon Baits. 
Got the green guys over there. And then more zooms. Look at all those zooms. Oh man, just too many zooms to even go through. But I guarantee you, if there's a zoom you're looking for that you have not been able to find, it's probably like a 95% chance that Walt got it somewhere in this shed. Zipping around here, see some nice power baits, some culprits. Uh, the old Crawl Dad 10 inch Florida Special. Got some Gene LaRue worms. What else do we have here? Man, power baits, rage, some missile baits. <laughs> I just, you only just came and do this justice. There's just so, so much here. So I see some coffee shad or the coffee infused baits from Strike King. I don't know what the heck that thing is. That's like the biggest one I've ever seen, the bullworm. I've never seen KVD throw that, but that's like a, uh, I don't know, 12 inch worm, <laughs> giant. And more zooms. Man, I, I swear, like, I think Walt must have bought out all the zooms. So before we get to the end, we'll zip through the center aisle. Looks like just about every hook and weight you'd want. Some nice uh, net bait and then Reaction Innovations, uh, Skinny Beaver and Sweet Beaver. I don't think it's a Skinny Beaver, that's something else. But yeah, just these Sweet Beavers there. Zipping around. We got some cool loose baits here. So it looks like some Sassy Shad type stuff. Yeah, some loose Sassy Shads for 39 cents. Ah, what do we have down here? So this looks interesting. Oh, there we go. Some nice OG packaging of the old Sassy Shad for $2.09. Uh-oh. There's Mr. Intuitive Anglin himself. There he is. Look at that. Randy Blockett hanging out with the old fishing shad for $6. I feel like I should buy that and send that to Randy on his channel. What do you think, huh? <laughs> That's a, that is just a giant bunch of plastic there's another one man the old sassy shad <laughs> and the old fishing shad from worm king there we go extra soft that doesn't have randy's name on it that one does and yeah i don't really fish a sassy shad a whole ton looks like rick clums on the other side but that might be fun just to send randy just for the heck of it huh Send him a little retro bass and care pack. <laughs> nice mullet, by the way. I used to have one like that too. All right, then wrapping around. What else do we have here? So some missile baits, some big bites. Nice super floater for $2.99. Looks like a chartreuse lizard. Oh, some OG bass assassins hiding out down there. Surprise, surprise, more zooms. And, oh, this is interesting. So these are some baits you don't see too often. The old Ron Savage Touchdown. This is for the uh, old, I think it's the old Carolina rig. Original Carolina pre-rigged worm. I like that blue color, by the way. Look at that. And that is for a dollar and 99 cents. I might be, uh, I might be grabbing that dude right there. And there's another one for 3.99. from Touchdown Products. And you can sort of see here, there's a really old package of that, what that kind of looks like. So meant to be Carolina rigged, comes pre-rigged with two hooks, it looks like, and a little leader. No price on that, guys. But I'm gonna leave all those on the shelf. I might just grab this one because I, uh, I like that OG blue. The customers are predominantly anglers, get a lot of the local tournament anglers. And then there's the weekend folks. Um, Tournament anglers are here. Most of them come once every other week. And of course, they don't care what the weather is. The uh, non-tournament anglers, yeah, if it's gonna be a rough weekend, I won't see them. <laughs> um, but they, uh, they know what they want. They just need a place to find it. And until they have found me, they usually go to the big boxes. And sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. Well, here, the only time I don't have it is if my wholesaler is out of stock at the moment, mind you now. And uh, 
it comes in within a week, maybe 10 days at best. And so, um, yeah, getting them what they want in a timely manner, which now, because of my inventory that I get, um, I'm on a 36 uh, turnaround time. So when I send in an order 36 hours or less from now, I'll get the order in. And if I hit it just right, I'll get the order that day when the shipments go out. Here I am in a very old school looking corner of shed number three. And this is Walt's hard bait shed. <sighs> this is gonna be a fun one. This is also gonna be a dangerous one for me to go through. I see some really cool old school discontinued baits. I see some headings behind me. I see some nice old Bill Lewis over there. I see some bandits in the back, and I even see some loose OG pose on the floor. We'll go around this one as quick as we can, but yeah, this one, uh, this shed could put a hurting on old retro for sure. Well, we just closed the door on shed number three, and this is the frog slash hard bait shed. Right on the door itself, there's a ton of hollow bodied frogs some of the newer Spros and Booyahs, some nice OG scum frogs up here. What else we have? We got some Lunker Hunts and some nice, <laughs> oh man, look at that old snag proof. So just about every hollow bodied frog that you would want to throw today. Moving on over again, counterclockwise. So see a bunch of nice Hopkins jigging spoons here. Looks like there might be a man's or even an Acme Sidewinder mixed in there. Below that, so this is the obviously the schooling bass section. We've got some man's Little George here. We've got some cotton Cordell gay blades and also uh, some Nichols lures and Strike Kings as well. Nice. And a nice reflecto spoon. That's more of a casting spoon than a, a jigging spoon. Going around this wall, so it looks like some river to sea stuff here. Uh, we've got some headings. Oh, what is this? Uh, a nice little OG Cotton Cordell Crazy Shad in the old pattern for 12 bucks. I'll be leaving that there. I always like these uh, spit and image headings. $6.79, not too bad. What else do we have? So I see coming down, let's see, we've got some bombers here. Looks like mostly newer stuff. Got some Smithwick's Devil's Horses, $6.99. Chrome, looks like a Tennessee Shad. That's apropos, that's where we are. And there's the bigger model, nice. Got some Normies here, some more Normies. Ah, I got some nice Hot Lips. Hot Lips Express quarter ounce crankbaits, 10 bucks. Ah, look at this section. You don't see this anymore. Nice old plastic rattle traps. I always love this packaging. I always loved the cartoon image on the Bill Lewis. I don't know if that's Bill Lewis himself. The plastic, unfortunately, this tended to break off on the peg, which is why I think Bill Lewis ultimately went away from it. But if you come to the tackle box, you can still get those today in the OG packaging. And there's a nice Tequila Sunrise, $12.99 for that guy. And then we got some other nice ones. Uh, there's a nice OG one as well, $5.59. So <laughs> Walt definitely prices them according to demand. And I guess Tequila Sunrise is as hot here as it is anywhere else. So there's a nice quarter ounce Tequila Sunrise for $12.99 as well. <laughs> got a nice spin trap. That's always been a cool one. Uh, we got some more Lure Jensen bass baits. Looks like a old brush baby. Crawfish pattern for $5.09. Got a number of those. That looks like a quarter ounce bait. Got some bomber flat A's, some bomber regular model A's. Ah, and there's some bombers in the OG packaging. The old chartreuse black shad, $10. That looks like a pearl. 
uh, an old crawfish, and I forget what that guy is. That's parrot or lime, not sure, but that's pretty cool. He's got some old bombers still in the package. What else do we see old in the package? Uh, I see this, a bunch of rebels. So we've got the rebel sinking minnow, ghost minnow. How much is that guy? $4.99. Uh, it's pretty cool. I don't know if they make that anymore. They may not. We've got the old crick hopper. No price on that one, but I think most of these are $4.99 in the old Rebel packaging. They used to have this, and this was always my favorite Rebel. And they've moved to more of this one, which I don't like nearly as much. And a little Wee Crawl as well for $4.99. So some nice OG Rebels. And looks like there's some more OG Rebels over here. Ah, so this is more of the We Are variety. Uh, that's pretty cool. Nice little We Are, 10 bucks. That's a pattern you don't see too often. That's the pattern of We Are that I tend to find whenever I see an OG We Are. Nice little deep diver. That might be more of a parrot color. And then we've got, <laughs> That almost looks like a bandit model uh, we are, doesn't it? Look at that pattern. That's interesting, I've never seen that before. 10 bucks, that's pretty cool. And it looks like there's two of those on the peg. We've got a smaller one in chrome, and then a few of these in a crawfish pattern. So a nice little section of OG we are's. Coming on up here, I see some storms. Looks like all the new stuff. Some Booyah Hard Knockers. All right, we got some nice KVD crankbaits. I'm about up to my ears in crankbaits. What do we have? Some Storms. More KVDs. And I guess we've got some Overflow Worms. Looks like this is more of a finesse worm section here. So just too many soft plastics in the other one. Ah, here we go. Some nice Charlie Brewer Slider Worms. Classic, three forty-nine for those. This looks like something of a Japanese variety. I don't know what this is. Uh, the Helgramite from Nico. Next generation soft baits for eight eighty-nine for three of them. So nice uh, <laughs> non-dollar bin <laughs> Japanese soft plastic. All right, well, moving on. Here's a pretty glorious wall of bandit crankbaits. These don't look like the OG bandits, but nevertheless, it is so cool to see that many bandits up for display and sale. So it looks like this is predominantly 200s here. That's the first one, two, three rows. So just <laughs> probably about what, 50 different models of 200. And then here we go into the 300s. And down below here, there's the 100. So we also got some 100s as well. So just a giant wall of bandits. Man, that's pretty cool. Here we go. Ton of KVD slash Strike King crankbaits. I gotta be honest with you, I'm not a, <laughs> I've never really thrown a half pound crankbait before. So I don't really know much about these, except that is a absolute monster. I feel like you could troll for Wahoo with that. <laughs> that thing is huge. But there are a ton of those for anybody who knows. Moving over here, see some nice power baits. Ah, some Cotton Cordell Big O's and, ooh, check out that. Mr. Bill Dan's Pro Model Fat A. That's the baby one too, ho, ho, ho. And looks like he's got one, two, three, four, five, six of those on the peg. Um, man, I might, I've got a pretty good section of Pro Autograph Excaliburs going in the old Retro Bass Studio. I don't have that size, so I might just grab one or two of those. I do have one of those in my tackle box, but that's a pretty good looking bait by Mr. Bill Dance. So yeah, let's see if they're all the same. Two. Yeah, they are. So I will, uh, I'll grab two of those. I'll leave four of those on the peg for you guys. 
Moving on up, just kind of a hodgepodge of different stuff here. I see some super spots, see some Phoebe spoons, some six cents stuff. So this looks like a new variety of crankbait. I don't know what this is. The Z Boss 8. Not familiar with Profound Outdoors. I don't know if they're local or not, but Walt has just a giant wall of those guys. Moving on, I see some more spots. There's an OG spot for $9.99. Ah, some classic MEPS Aglia spinners for $4.49. I've always loved that green color. I don't know why. I used to catch a ton of chain pickerel on a green just like that. Got some Rebels. Uh, we got some Yakum wake bait that looks sort of like a Strike King, doesn't it? And here we go, we got some top waters. I see some Fred Arbogast here. There's a Rebel Jumpin' Minnow. And a bunch of headings, check this out. So we got some Lucky 13s up here, some torpedoes, a couple of mud bugs for $7.89. More torpedoes, ooh. We got some crazy crawlers and a nice moss boss. Check that guy out. Moss boss for $3.99. Uh, I've got some of these in my tackle box. I don't know if I have any on the card itself. And that's a pretty sweet looking one. So I might grab those guys and add them to the pile. Let's see. Yeah, buddy. And what else? We got some newer pop bars. Some more headings there, and also some Arbogast as well. And that just to wrap, wraps up shed number three. Yeah, we started out with two. That's all I had. But over the years, um, we added the buildings to number four. Now, the only reason I have four is because Linda said, she said, I want to see grass. And uh, so you can only have four. <laughs> so if I had my way, that whole grass out there that you see would be buildings. Uh, but so I have four and you really get creative on how to maximize space to uh, make sure everything stays around and people can see it. Because the last thing I want to have happen is out of sight, out of mind. If you don't see it, you're not gonna buy it. So I find creative ways to display, show, and you'll see some of them out there, baskets. Um, I hang up, if, if you'll notice, there's top to bottom, or rather top to bottom, and a lot of the fellas when they come in, I didn't see it. Yeah, you just didn't look, and you didn't know where it was, so I show them, oh wow, it's way the hell down there, huh? Yeah, so, and make sure I always tell new people, make sure you look high, make sure you look low. Last, but certainly not least, is shed number four. And I take it back, shed number four might actually smell better than shed number two. This is a continuation of the soft plastics portion of the tackle box. But what's so cool about shed number four is there are bins and bins of loose OG plastics like this. I don't even know what the heck some of these baits are. These things are all priced really well like a five cents a piece for that glorious looking little nugget. <laughs> this one is going to be another fun one to go through. Woo! <laughs> All right, but what I love about shed number four is this, just the <laughs> incredible amount of loose, soft plastics. This almost reminds me of Jerry's Tackle in Homewood, Arkansas which also had just a ton of these unidentified soft plastics. What's so cool about this is, yes, there's stuff that you've seen before, like the Bid Baits, Suicide Shad Loose, but then there's just random stuff like this. Looks like an old Sensation style bait. Just a giant three curly tail worm. What was the price of that? I think I dropped it. Five cents a piece. That is awesome. Check that out. So like you can get this just OG pork chunk, five cents. Looks like the vast majority of these are all five cents. Ooh. 
It's a nice random worm that you'll never ever see. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know where to begin with this stuff. So it looks like these are V&M baits. But this, is that like a zipper worm? I don't know. Got some more worms here, some double tails. Uh, <laughs> I just don't even know what to do with all this. Uh, but then check this out. That looks like, I don't even know what that is. That's an old uh, flat tail worm, sort of like jelly worm era. Un unbranded, but clearly that is not a new bait for five cents. So cool. Here we've got more crawls down this way. Uh, again, unbranded, so I have no idea what this is. It's a great looking crawl for five cents each. So you could just totally, totally go nuts here with all of these just loose baits, some of which you probably recognize and some of which you don't. More loose baits here, mostly swim baits, looks like. Looks like uh, some yums. Some Bass Magics, some Reaction Innovations, I remember those. Some Strike Kings here. Craziness. <laughs> uh, uh, what is this, Zooms? Yep. Insane amount of hollow body swim baits. That is too, too cool. Coming around here, we got some more. Looks like the old Kitek Swing Impact. Bunch of those. Even got some West Coast baits, look at that. Looks like these are old hammer swim baits, I think. Yep, the old big hammer. More soft plastics over here. Unidentified plastic goodness. <laughs> all five cents. I just, yeah, I don't even know where to start with all this stuff. Probably best just to, to leave it be. Ah, some nice lizards there, blue and black. Again, I'll stop saying it, but they're all five cents. More lizards here. What do we have here? Lizards, lizards, worms. Just never ending. And looking up top in shed number four, looks like a definitely swim bait is a theme. I do see some Ned Rig, some uh, stick baits up here. Some nice Reaction Innovation Skinny Dipper. That used to be one of my favorite baits back in the day. Woo, love that thing. Some nice scrounger heads. Some big scrounger heads up there. All kinds of jig heads. Again, I think most of these are geared toward swim baits. Just a ton of <laughs> swim bait paraphernalia. One of my favorite swim bait heads of all time, the old Buckeye J. Will swim bait head. I love this thing. Some jackhammers, some more chatter baits, Alabama rigs, even though we're in Tennessee and chatterbaits. So yeah, Walt is definitely good at keeping up themes of the different uh, shops. I don't know if he's ever gonna make a seismic shift. It must take him all weekend to move stuff from shed to shed. And wrapping up here, so we got some Yamamoto's, we got some Zoom Flukes, Crush City Freeloader, I don't know that one, from Rapala, nice. And finally, a few gamblers. So that is just about it for shed number four. Hours of operation are from uh, our Tuesday through Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time. Make sure you say Central Time because people call from all around the planet. Well, at least the United States. <laughs> um, I take cash. I take credit cards. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that. I don't take checks unless I really know you well and then I'll take a check, but rarely does anybody pay in check anymore. It's either cash or credit card. Uh, let's see, in terms, I do ship. 
You know, uh, I've had uh, folks from all the way up in Connecticut call for, uh, for things. So I do ship and uh, there is a shipping fee. I try to use as often as I can the U.S. Postal Service because that is the cheapest way to send it. And in the time of delivery is about the same as all the FedEx and the UPSs. Well, I hope that you're enjoying our little walkthrough, albeit brief and high paced, of the tackle box in Clarksville, Tennessee. I gotta tell you, if I was within 500 miles of this place, I would be here at least once a month. It is totally worth checking out in person, but even if you can't, feel free to reach out to Walt because he said he will ship any old school gold or even new school gold that you find to you. In the meantime, I am on the clock. I gotta get back to shopping quickly before I've gotta get out of here. But if you're looking for some more old school content, you can click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. And until then, keep that carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bastard.